No, there's still some in there. Huh? Oh. They're hiding in the, hiding in the back of the freezer. Is that better, guys? Let me know if that's better. Um, I had to switch because I was using my camera and then it just like froze and stopped. So I had to like, restart it. How does it work when you use your phone and you try plugging into the sink over here? Huh? You try plugging your phone into the sink over here? Yeah, it didn't work. No? No. So, I'm starting again. Are you using stuff out? Mm-hmm. Okay, better? Okay. You guys just gotta keep telling me because I just keep talking and then I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but now this is my phone, so hopefully it will be better. But what I am gonna do really quick is see if I can fix that. Okay, that looks better. My phone is just so much better, I think, to use for lives. I don't know why I always try other things. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so let's try this. This is all ready to go. I have my water soluble, my sticky back. So the hard part about this is, you know how I used to just stick my stabilizer underneath here? Well, now I can't do that because of the table. So what I have to do is just lift it up a little bit and then hope that it catches. So let's try it. So I know where my... a live on this machine the other day. I don't know who was all on there, but let me bring you guys up closer so you guys can see what I'm doing. Let's see here. Put you on the chair. Okay. So I'm going to do this one more time because I don't know what just happened. Left these last two days on my machine. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay. C, C frame, 90%. I always do 90% when I do my levies because um, blankets I do 100%, levies I do at 90. I don't, it's just, that's just what I've done, what's worked for me. Again, when you do them, just figure out the golden number that works for you. I'm just checking the middle again since it all moved on me and I don't want it to mess up, so. because those are the colors that I want. I'm going to hit OK and start.
see how it's doing to undermine. That's the knockdown stitch that it's doing. And you can always adjust the knockdown stitch in brilliant too. This is just the setting that I'd like to add. I just tried to go live on my other camera and didn't work, so I had to pull up a second live. So if you guys see my last live, it got cut off. So I'm just kind of, this is my new cable if you guys haven't seen it. So I like it when it's going. It's really nice, but it's just getting it in and situated. That's a little bit difficult. And the fact that it takes up so much room right here, I have to like try to squeeze through there. This machine over here and the top over there is kind of difficult because I can't really again, get through there. So, but the table itself is super nice. So we have a lot of blankets here. I'm waiting for this to be done and then I'm gonna sew this one for you guys. And then I have over here, we have all those blankets I need to sew tonight. So it's gonna be a late night for sure. It does one layer, and now it's going back and doing a second layer. I don't know if you can see that really well. But see how now it's doing like a tighter stitch? So it's going back over it. And then it'll go over that with the blue that she wanted, so the name will pop. So I'm really liking this feature on it. So actually while that's going, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna start working on these over here. Don't look at my table over there. <laughs> Not this, this. Look at I tried spray painting it, and you can tell I messed the whole cabinet up. So I actually got my new cabinet in today. I just haven't put it together yet.
she weeps at me a ton whenever a thread breaks. It's like, okay, I heard you. <laughs> but it keeps going. Change my needle? Yeah. Got it. Thank you so much for telling me that. You're welcome. <laughs> what would you do if I wasn't out here to make that suggestion for you? I don't know if it's backwards or not, but the 65.9, those are the ones I use. And I've never had a problem with them, so I use them on all my machines. And another trick that I do, because it's sometimes really hard to hold up um, the needle and tighten it at the same time. I use these little like, I don't even remember what they're called, but they have like little eyes, like teeth, eye teeth, like teeth on them, I guess you would call it. And it holds my needle in place while I put it in the machine. And you have to make sure you're putting it in the right way with the back. So I just slip it through there and underneath here and up. And then if you have to twist it any which way, it makes it easy to twist. table makes it kind of difficult to get underneath here. So I'm going to go back a few stitches. Actually, how big is my table? I think it's six by six or six by, I think it's six by six. Exactly. It is 9.45 here. And there's my line.
So I never judge it until it's out of here. So I'm pretty sure that we're done with this machine for the night. Let's deal with this in a second. Now you guys will be able to hear me whether my AirPods are working or not. I'm just not sure if you guys could hear me when I was over there. You guys working on anything tonight? How's the lighting? Are you guys good? I know it's kind of hard to see. I took it to my dark room so I look in the head. Oh my gosh, that's so funny because I just ordered mine <laughs> and my Christmas. I'm so in love with my Christmas fabric this year. So what I'm going to do is actually cut all the blankets out first and then we're going to pin them because I like to work in um, just a weird way of working. I like to do it in steps instead of one order at a time. I ran out of bolts, so I can't put it on a bolt, and I'm dying all my fabric. That's why I haven't been able to put it all away. Keep it put away. 
dirty. Big roll. You guys, I just got lucky. We did this one last week. We did it really early. But I like to embroider them all at the same time. So I think this is going to work for that one. Super pretty. Why do you leave the Mickey so much bigger than the backing? Um, it's just easier for me. Well, these ones are just extra pieces left from um, like cutting out lovies. So the width of my faux fur basically gives me um, a little bit extra for my blanket. Like you saw that one, it was like an extra like inch and a half on each side. And the reason why I just don't take the time to cut it exact until afterwards. So you'll see after I sew it, then I'll cut it down exact. But it's just kind of a waste of time to me to cut it first because I'm gonna cut it again anyway. And it's just easier to sew with when you have a little bit of extra faux fur on the side because it does tend to shift a little bit. Um, it's just how I've been doing it since the very beginning. So I just don't, I just don't take the time like this. I mean, I could cut the excess off and then pin it and sew it, but why would I waste my time doing that when I'm gonna sew it and then cut it anyway? So either way you have to cut it. So I don't do it until I actually need to. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't like this black. Very specific with my fur. Uh, and I like it when it's the the hide, I guess it's called. I'm not really sure. The exact name of it. I just know the way it looks. So you, this is exactly what I mean. So like the width of my fabric that I buy is literally the perfect width for two loveys, one and two. So what I do, this is how I do it every time. I'm not really sure. Why don't I go like this so that you guys can see it better. Let me, who let me do this? Okay. 
So, what I do in this situation is this right here is exactly what I'll need for a lovey. And I was trying to leave it because I thought I had another piece of lovey down there that I keep my extra pieces down there and I just pull from it, but I didn't have it. So what I'll actually do is just cut it even with this. That way my next blanket will just be from here, up, if that makes sense. So I don't want to cut too much. So I usually leave like an inch above here. And I'll just go straight across. It gets really messy, so I vacuum it. And then I just know like straight down right here, I cut it. I just like to sew with like straight lines. I'm not gonna like cut it all like around the lovey like that because it just makes it messier. I'd rather just sew it and then cut it. Everyone has their own process and their own way of doing what they do. And this way just makes sense to me. Yeah, it's the same time every day. So I'll be on there around 10.30 my time. And I'm, we're, so it's the same as uh, Pacific Standard Time. I'm Mountain Standard Time, but it's the same as Pacific. So right now it's 10 o'clock my time. So whatever time you have, just know that I go at 10.30 a.m. to 11. And it's the same time every day. Thank you, Cece. Except for my camera, it like lagged and you guys couldn't see like the hoop camera when I was trying to go over all the hoops and stuff. I rewatched it and it was like super laggy, which is very frustrating. I hate that. I think I'm just gonna have, I'm gonna see if I can get some like sort of AV guy out here to see what's going on and to connect me a little better. I don't have all these issues anymore. I'm just frustrated with it. It's annoying. It's like I'll be talking and then all of a sudden I just don't even know that it's not working. Like my first live tonight, I had no idea. I was just talking. Like you feel like it's going all smooth and then all of a sudden it's not. <laughs> getting easier though when I first started doing lives 
I'm not nervous for my lives anymore because I've been doing them for so long. I'm definitely nervous when I go live for Sewing Machines Plus. I don't know if you guys can tell. I'm like nervous, jittery. I don't know. It's weird because it like literally makes me like nauseous. I don't know why because I know like a lot of you guys go on there so I shouldn't like feel that way because I do the lives with you guys all the time. So it shouldn't be like that. It just is. I don't know if it's because it's not my own live. It's somebody else's. It's just hard. I think it's because I get nervous because on my own live, it's okay if like my camera dies or my phone's not working or like earlier I had to start a new live and that's fine because it's mine, <laughs> my live. But if I do that and it messes up on someone else's, I just like freak out about that. I'm like, oh. Do you make anything with your minky scraps? You cut off blankets after sewing. Um, I have, I do have a bucket down here that I've saved with like random scraps, but like this right here, like I won't save that because there's really nothing I can do with that. I do have a project though that I'm going to be um, adding to my shop here shortly. So I think on my last live I told you guys that I was going to take another break. Um, I was supposed to have taken a vacation from Etsy during Christmas and I did. I took, I put my shop on vacation mode, but I really didn't get a vacation to, the reason why I was going to do that was obviously for the holidays and for my family and stuff. But then to also be able to spend time just, you know, adding stuff to my shop, just taking time and doing that sort of stuff, like brain, just like, I don't know, just going through and making new designs, thinking of new stuff for my business, just that sort of thing. And I didn't get to because then our whole family caught COVID and then we were sick and then it just like went around our family like twice. And so it just like took a toll on me. I didn't get a break. And by the time that everything was like back to normal, I had to get, I had to open my shop back up because then it was my son's birthday and my business is huge for my son's birthday because basically my business is around him. And so I make February, he was born on Valentine's day. And so my Valentine's launch is always really big because it is about Andrew. And so I was like, I have to open my shop back up if I want to launch this. So I ended up opening back up and never being able to have taken my vacation. So right now what I'm trying to do is get through my orders after Hoop Fest and everything is over, I'm going to focus and get all my orders out. And then um, I think I'm gonna do a, a short vacation time off because I want, I just have so many things that I want to do for my business that I haven't had the time to do. And it's just frustrating because I literally haven't added anything new in a while. I just haven't had time. And I just, I want to, like I really want to add these things and I just haven't had the time to. So I'm going to take that time to kind of focus and just revamp, I guess, uh, because I haven't had the time to do that in a long time so like I reopened my website I like I relaunched it and redid the whole thing so now I just want an extra time to just kind of make new things and explore I want to be able to play with my stuff that I have like just be able to play with different things and I haven't had the chance to but I need to get There were other guests that had issues as well today. Oh, really, Cece? I didn't see that. I'm, I'm sure it wasn't as bad as mine. Do you have a large mat to fit the tabletop? So I just have four of the one, or the 36 by 24 uh, cutting mats. I got them at Joann's a long time ago. Actually, these ones are new. I changed them just recently, uh, probably a couple months ago. And I had, I bought three new ones. 
because my fourth one back here, I never really use. I never use this one because I'm always either right here, here, or I stand over there, but I never cut anything on this side. So I didn't have to change that one out. But yeah, I just have four of them stuck together. I am looking for a company that can do my entire table, a six by six mat, because just one full mat, I know it's gonna be expensive, but it's so worth it, because I hate having these lines right here in the center. Um, it just throws me off every time. So I'm always, you'll see me either standing on this side or standing on this side of the table. And I just wanna be able to stand right in the center. Love your machine, but I only embroidered for a hobby, so 10,000 is too much to spend. Totally, totally get it. Um, yeah, it is an awesome machine, but yes, it's quite pricey if you don't use it every day and just use it for a hobby, so I totally understand that. I was actually eyeing the baby lock six needle and i know you guys are gonna be like why do you want a six needle you have a 12 needle um just for my blankets because i only use at the most like two colors <laughs> on my blankets and i saw that that one has like magnetic hoop that you can use like a snap hoop i saw that it has the tubular support system um and i don't even remember which model it is i wrote it down somewhere but I was eyeing that one. I really wanted a brother because I love brother and I have all their products. Um, so I really wanted to try out that. But I'm not sure because I also was eyeing the 15 needle, the SWF, the 15 needle one, because it's more of an industrial strength machine. And I just kind of wanted to like maybe compare and see like if it is like what the hype is about. I'm not sure how to really say that, <laughs> but you know what I mean? So just, there's a lot, a lot of machines to think about. So many machines, lots of fun stuff. But what I really, really took notes on today was that um, class on stabilizer. That was interesting because I want to add like just more. I'm planning on opening, I think, a second shop because I want to do more fun stuff. Like I'm always going to have my Bingham Bliss shop, but I also want to be able to make accessories and like just random stuff. And I don't want to add stuff to my shop that I have now because I feel like my shop right now is at its like um, sweet spot, I guess you could say, where in the beginning when I first started, you know, you don't know like how much to put in your shop or what to add or take away. So within the last five years of running it, I've actually like taken a bunch away and then I've added some more things and taken stuff away and added. And now I'm like kind of at that sweet spot where my, business is like good and I don't want to like mess with it. I want to add other categories and stuff like that, if that makes sense. So I'm keeping it the way it is and I'm just going to maybe open up a different shop and then kind of just do fun stuff. Like just stuff that like I want to do for just for fun, but also sell, if that makes sense. <laughs> So that'll be interesting. But that's the sort of stuff that I want to focus on when I take my break is if, what do I want to do? How do I want to add it? Then I'm going to have to like make the stuff and then do all that stuff. So it's a lot of prep work to do that. Let's see. Same here. So I bought the 15 needle buy and I love it. Awesome. When did you get that? Glad I'm able to catch this live. Hi there. Thank you for being here. I still use my PE 800 for small items that don't have a lot of color changes. Yeah. So I've actually wanted to break out my Janome flatbed over here um, for the embroidery field and not just kind of mess with it. Cause I know a lot of people have asked me in the past 
about it. And honestly, like honest to God, I've used it twice for embroidery. And then I quickly moved into a multi-needle, which was my Fast 10 needle. And so I will definitely need like a refresher on it. I love that machine so much though. And I've always said if I ever needed or if it ever broke or I needed a new one, I would definitely just replace it and get the same one because I love that machine. It's so good. I love that machine. I missed Blaine's sale last week for the Viking machine for 5K by the time I got off work at, and went to order all the machines were sold out. They were sold out so fast. He called me and was like, we are sold out, like done. <laughs> but the good thing is, is there's a waiting list. So if you are seriously interested in it, call them and tell them you're interested and you can be put on the waiting list because he will, he is thinking about getting more in. So I don't know when that's happening or what the price will be, but you guys know Blaine, he'll give you guys good prices. So definitely call in and I would do it like as soon as possible if you're that interested in it and put your name on the waiting list for the machine. It's a great machine. I love it. I was waiting and waiting and waiting for him to ask me to do a live on that machine. And he surprised me because I had no idea they were even thinking about getting more in because I asked him before I bought my second 12 needle if they were planning on getting more of those machines in and they weren't. And so I was debating between the two. And so ultimately I ended up getting the 12 needle. I love the 12 needle and I wouldn't ever regret my decision. Trust me, but I was thinking about getting that machine as well. I was going back and forth on it. I also had the Melco in Contender, but I'm not a computer person. You guys all know that. <laughs> so knowing that I would have to use a computer every day, just kind of, no thank you. I'm just not into it. So I love my machines. I think I've made all the right decisions on the machines that I have. Every machine you get is going to be a work in progress and you're going to have to learn things on it, but you have to just do it and not be afraid to get your hands wet with them. Just do it. Just go after it, make a mistake, and who cares? Just keep trying. I mean, I do it. I do it on lives all the time. You guys know that. I mess up all the time. But the only way you're going to learn is if you try. You have to try. Don't be afraid to try new products either. Just do it. I do it all the time. I don't know if it's going to work, but then it ends up being fine. And I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I did that. So. Sorry, I always focus when I do this. I love it, actually. It turned out so cute. I always use these tweezers to get out my water soluble. I don't know why. I just feel like they work the best on getting them out. I don't know if they're like pointier or what. Okay, now I have to show you guys this one. Oh my God. I don't like using water to get the water soluble out because it makes the faux fur or the minky like kind of fuzzy, if that makes sense. I know it's already fuzzy because it's the fur, but um, I don't like the way it looks. And I'm gonna show you another trick that I do with this. So I'm gonna bring you guys in a little bit closer you can see what I do. And um, this is just what I do. So some of you may not agree with it, but I like it and it's what I've always done and never had any complaints on it. So everyone does their own thing, right? Let me see here. I've had the buy for almost a year. That's awesome. And you're still in love with it? I know I've had mine for quite a while too, and I just love all of mine. Where did my charger right there? Okay. So let's see if I can. Let me take it off here first. 
see if I can do this correct. Whoa. Okay, I don't know how that is, but we'll see. Okay, so. See, normally it would have been on there like perfect, but I'm still getting used to where that table is and it was sideways, but it still turned out good. So it's not a big deal. No big deal. So that was two layers of, of tearaway, thin tearaway, uh, light tearaway. I don't know the right terminology. I learned to a little bit. <laughs> but there's firm and there's soft and all these other things. And I just, I just call it tearaway. Okay. So there's that. Put all my stuff away so I'm back in order. Okay. So what I like to do with this is see how like in between here and the C right here and the R, I don't know if you guys can see that, it's kind of fuzzy. Well, it's supposed to be because it's faux fur. I don't like it sticking up like that. So what I do is trim it down. And like I said, I don't know if you guys agree with that or not, but I feel like it just makes it look cleaner. And I don't do a lot. I just kind of go in between. Who else does this? I know I can't be the only one. I get so quiet when I concentrate. So, it looks a little cleaner. Now, with this big one, I try to not get like too crazy on it. I just do like the top a little bit because you don't want to leave like chunks out. So I just go a little bit, front and back. You can kind of like hold it in place and trim it. It's like a haircut, guys. <laughs> I used to be a hairstylist, so this is like natural to me to just kind of go in here and trim stuff. Not too much though, because you can see it. And then it just makes it better, so you read it better. I don't know if you can see that. But that was my little tip of the night. I like to do that. Go away. <laughs> Not you guys, I'm trying to like make the close up better. Okay, let's see. Good night, Lavina. 124 in Ontario. Oh my goodness, it's only 10.30 here. I do that on stocking faux fur. Awesome, I'm not the only one, yay. I just bought everything I need to start making tutus. I'm in Australia and the ribbon and tool are so expensive, not sure if it's worth it. At least it'll be super fun. I actually used to make tutus, if you guys didn't know that. I did that a while ago, and then I stopped doing it just because I got so busy with all my other stuff. That way it never loses of like stitches to you. Just with letters. Exactly, yeah, I just feel like it makes it like, even the knockdown stitch is nice, but I just feel like that makes it even nicer. Okay, so now what I do is I actually fold it over with the name facing up because I want to be able to see where I'm placing the name on the blanket. So, I'm gonna scoot you guys back so you guys can see it better. Lovey. 
So usually I go this way with it, but because the name is folded over the opposite way, I always like the name down in this corner right here. So this is how I'm going to do it. And I'm lining it up with the end of the R and the end of the C, making sure it is nice and even right there. And then I take just whatever marker I know will work. Some of these don't show up on here. So this one, let's see. And I just trace around it. So this is definitely a different process than my normal lovey making. Are you even marking it? Yeah. Okay. And so I make a stop right there and right there. So now when I lift it up, you'll be able to see this is my opening right here where I didn't mark it. And that way I know when I sew it, that's where I'm gonna stop. And then I'm gonna start right here again and then sew around the rest of it. That is how I do my minky front and back lenses. And as long as it is right sides together, you are good to go. And I just pin. So there you have it. You can see my the outline kind of of the lovey. There's another one. And we just have two more to pin. One of these. So apparently I pre-cut these and I don't remember doing that, but I'm really glad I did. Because I didn't have to do it. Break up a big roll. I love this one. It's so pretty. Okay. And this one has a name. I already uh, pressed these so they're nice and unwrinkled except where I folded it, but the, that, that's fine. So I always make sure to leave 
just about an inch over here on this side. And then on the opposite side of the name, I always leave more right here because I like to leave a little, like just a little opening, a little tag right here to flip it in. Because with this minky, when you go to sew the opening closed, you have to, it has to be a little bit thicker. Otherwise it won't, it, you can just like open it back up. It doesn't stay put. Good morning from the Netherlands. Thanks for joining. Particularly the blush pink, it's gorgeous. This is my favorite one. I ordered this one by like the huge rolls. Cause this is like, my, well it's my favorite, but it also like goes perfectly with my seashells and seahorse one. It goes perfect with my mermaid one. It goes perfect with a lot of like my floral ones really pretty and I think that this type of hide is very easy to sew with I don't know I've never had issues with it some of the other higher pile like minkies I've had more issues sewing with them and not that it's hard it's just more frustrating because they move a little bit more this one I just like go over no big deal and I haven't had any issues with like the blanket becoming uneven or anything like that. Notice for the first time today because when you have it you don't realize what you have but for those of you that are new here I just I work in my garage obviously you can tell um, but we have renovated it into a shop and this past I guess spring before summer hit we put a AC unit in here and I told my husband last summer that I wouldn't work another summer in here because we live in Arizona and it's definitely hot here. It's so hot. And I haven't really realized how much cooler it is in here with the AC versus not having it. Because when you have it, again, you don't really pay attention to it. When you don't have it, you're like dying. So last summer I was literally like dying. Well, today I went from here after my live this morning and I went into the regular garage into the house because I had to use the restroom and when I was walking from here to there I opened my door and it was like a heat burst and I was like oh my gosh like is it seriously that hot I didn't realize like how much cooler it is in here with my AC so I was feeling super blessed today that I was able to finish my AC before it got so hot because it is so stinking hot in Arizona and it isn't about to get any cooler for a while. So that's my storytelling for the day. I was so surprised. I'm like, holy cow. So then we'll have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six blankets to sew. Yippee. And then we'll be done. It's 10.30. What time did we start? Like, I don't know. My live took forever to move even start because I couldn't get it connected. So 
We have two of these. This one's name is, does this one have a name? Yes, this one is the longer name. Willow, Willow Dean. I won't say the last name because I gotta keep it somewhat private on here. But this was the first time I done a, or the first time I did a three part name. And you just put it the same way, 45 degree angle, all the way around. Hey, Alicia, how are you? Perfect color pink, it is the perfect color pink, I love it. <laughs> I know, what is everybody doing it's still awake? School's out, that's right, I forgot. How did I forget? So tomorrow, straight after my live with uh, SMP, I have to um, take my daughter to the high school. She's gonna be a freshman this year. And we have to go meet with her counselor and do her schedule. So I have to like go pick her up after the live and then go do that. So tomorrow will be a busy day. Today was also very busy. This whole week has been crazy. What have you been working on, Alicia? I haven't really been around. I am just so blankets tonight. Getting through some orders. I need to make some uh, blankets and then I also need to do an order of, well two orders of nursing pads. We'll see how far I get with that. If I can't do them tonight I'll do them tomorrow. These definitely have to go out though. And If you guys aren't watching the Hoop Fest that Sewing Machines Plus puts on, you should be watching it. He gives away so many good things on those lives, it's ridiculous. Every single day he does giveaways. So if you guys want a nice prize, make sure you're watching. I believe all you have to do is be on the, on the computer commenting and you're already logged like automatically on there as long as you're commenting. I don't know how they have it going, but it's some good stuff. Lisa, it's almost 1 a.m. here. Gonna head to bed. Y'all have a great night. Have a good night, Lisa. Thank you so much for being here. Get some good sleep. Who's in Australia and the heat is unbearable. Sometimes I'm very lucky to have air conditioning and nice snowing when they're probably melt in the summer. Oh my gosh, I bet. Like, it is so hard to work when you're hot. You cannot even concentrate. I literally was serious when I was like, I told my husband, there is no way I will work again in the summer without air conditioning because you literally can't breathe. It's horrible. Horrible, horrible. All right, I am going to move you guys. Let me see what my phone's on. I'm gonna plug you guys in over there. 
reach. Hootfest is awesome. Gonna have to listen from my phone tomorrow while I'm working. Yes, you should definitely just be on there. Okay, is this right here okay for you guys? Or do you wanna be up closer? I don't really know where to put you. Maybe I can put you guys somewhere. Do you like that angle or the other one behind me better? I can do either one. I'm just plugging you guys in. I'm gonna turn it this way though so I can see you guys. You guys get up and close and personal with me. <laughs> Let's see here. Let me try to maybe go like that. There. Okay. So I always use this for the same thing. So I just do resume last setting and I didn't even check my bobbin but I think I'm good for a couple blankets this is good I just cleaned it so I don't need to clean it it has I have it on the locking setting so I don't have to back stitch So right here, I know I've told you guys before, but I'll say it again. I like to count how many stitches I go up on this point, and then I'll do the same exact count back down, whether that means it stops right here or if it stops down here, because I always want my point to be exactly the same.
have a locking stitch that I use right there too. Um, EST says almost 2 a.m. here in Florida. Oh my gosh, what are you guys doing up? That's so crazy. Thanks for being here though. Just got caught on there. I don't like it to be that long. Okay, I think I have one more lovey in me. Let's do this. Actually, here's one right here. talk to you guys like while I'm sewing this if you have anything you need to want to ask me or yeah just anything in general get to participate in too many lives so I'm very happy oh it's almost 4 p.m. here I see I read that wrong well I'm glad I'm gonna try to start doing a little bit more of the night lives so that you guys can all of my old night owls that I used to do lives with can maybe join me again okay so for this one I have to change my, so right now I have my needle all the way over to the right, not completely all the way over, but pretty much. So I'm just going to go into my um, needle adjustment and I'm going to take it from 8.0 to the center, which in, on this machine is 4.5 and then I'm going to hit OK. And then when I go back to the other blanket, I'll change it back to 8.0. It's super easy to change it. And then on this blanket, you just follow the line that I traced. I just do it right down the center of the um, presser foot. If they don't want these embroidered, these are actually way simpler than even just regular levies because you just trace them. Don't run out on me. But it might.
we're gonna okay I had a feeling it would that's okay it's super easy to change this machine so I'll show you guys how I do it so it stopped right there I was playing chicken with it it's okay it's super easy hopefully I have one made already which I don't think I do do I no okay well with this machine, you do not have to take your thread out. All you have to do is I have my little thread stand back here with another cone on it. And I just do it around it like that. So I just pull it through and just thread it like I would normally with, for the bobbin. I usually go around like seven times and then I cut it off. Hold on, that didn't work right. Not what I wanted. too much. I am making blankets tonight, so I have a lovey going, and I just ran out of thread, so I'm just threading. Whoa. What is happening today, you guys? I'm all off of my... I'm all off, so that didn't work. It's because I'm not focusing. Hold on. Where is my... Okay. One more time. Third time's the charm, right? Not my day. Not my day. It's okay. Let's do this again. So as I was saying, you don't have to unthread this machine. You can just, I have a thread stand back here that I use. That's what happened. It got stuck in all that crap back there. And you just wind it through here and then back around making sure that your thread isn't caught anywhere because mine was just caught So it'll stop. Last time, I don't know what happened, but anyway, it's supposed to do like a really nice, it does, wangs them really nicely. And then you can just pop it in there and go. So it normally is super fast. Lately, every time I try showing you guys something, it doesn't go right. But that's okay, because 
I like to show you guys that it is okay. Just keep going. literally never had issues with this machine so it's going to be that kind of night okay let's try this again Where's my thread? Okay. One, two, three, four, five. This one has like an automatic threader, so you just go back around that it through the back and it's supposed to pull right through except it's going to give me a hard time tonight. <laughs> it's okay you guys can laugh with me because tonight is just a night. <laughs> I'm just going to thread it myself because I don't know what's happening. It's supposed to thread automatically. Like, what the heck? Where's my threader? Okay, I'm going to try it one more time and then I'm done. There we go. I just have to get mad at it. Okay. I like to push the needle head or the needle down and then pull it back up just so I can get this piece going and started and then pushing it through that. Okay, that took way longer than it was supposed to. But I'm gonna start back at the corner because I want it to be nice and secure. it's because I haven't worked at night in so long and I'm just like I have so many things to do today and it started off with my internet not working and my phone freezing and I'm having to start my life over so it's one of those nights where you have to just like keep doing things over and over again but you know what I think about when that happens is that everything works out always. So whenever I get stuck in a situation, I always tell everyone, like, don't sweat it because it's all going to work out. Even when you have your bob and winder do this to you. So it always works out. Hi, Angel. Did I miss anything? How big is your cutting mat and where did you get it? My cutting mats are 36 by 24 and I got them all at Joann's. I can't work with my wedding bands on. Does anyone else have that issue? No, I never thought about it. I have the same issue. I always get them caught on thread of fabric. That is true. It does snag sometimes, but 
I've never had any like bad problem with that. So no, I keep them on. The only time I take them off is when I go to the gym. Okay, let's start doing these. So now I need to um, switch my stitch back. So it's at a 4.5 for that minky on minky, and now I'm going back up to an 8.0 because I like it to be all the way, not completely all the way over. If it was all the way over, I think this machine goes to a 9.0. I like it at 8.0. Now let's see if we can just kind of go with no issues. I agree, you have to keep moving forward and work through the issues. Yeah, you can't give up, otherwise you'll never solve them and then you won't know how to move on from it. So I just laugh at myself a lot of times. I'm like, and a lot of times it, my issues come from being tired. So I always know when I'm working really late at night and start making mistakes or like nothing's working. It's, I just need to go to bed. <laughs> Typically because I don't ever have like a lot of those issues if I'm focused and like on point. And a lot of times I'll catch myself doing something wrong and that's why it wasn't working because I wasn't doing it the right way. It's not the machine's fault, it's my fault because I wasn't paying attention. And that's when I cut myself off and I'm like, go to bed. Go take a break, go get some water, do something. I did that so many times when I first started embroidery and I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't watch YouTube or anything. I just honestly didn't even know YouTube was there for questions and videos and all that. I had no idea. So I was trying to learn it all my own. And I was so frustrated because I could not figure out the tension on my machine. And I just remember always like going to my husband and being like, I'm never going to understand this machine. I don't think I'm going to understand it. I'm not going to get it. It's never going to work, blah, 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 blah. But I just kept doing it. And then all of a sudden, one day, it like all clicked. It was the weirdest thing ever. And then literally ever since then, on any new machine that I get, I think about that. And I'm like, just... Don't give up, just keep going, you'll figure it out. And not talking about like the whole machine, but just like one specific thing versus one other specific thing. Like if I'm trying to figure one specific thing out and I can't do it, I just know like it'll eventually be just like a click of a button or something like that. <laughs> something ridiculous where you're like, how did I know? And it's always just that simple. Like the feature I talked to you guys about, if you guys were watching the live on some machines plus, the feature on the SMP, not the SMP, this SWF, look, I can't even talk right now. Um, the feature of the O, I had, am I moving the camera? Okay, sorry. Um, I had no idea until just recently that you can move the arrows without messing up your applique. Not that I do it anyway, because I always just take it off the machine, but it's nice to know that you can do that because people always ask me that. So, if you don't know what I'm talking about, and you want to know, I can explain it to you if you want. How is your Shopify going? I'm looking into doing it for my business shortly. I've heard a lot of great reviews. I love it. I do. Uh, it took me a long time to redo my shop because I redid my entire website from, I had a marketing company to do it for me. 
and they didn't do it the way I wanted. It wasn't Shopify, it was uh, before that, but it wasn't awesome. I'm already doing way better on my Shopify than I ever was on theirs, which is crazy because it's only been a few months that I've been on my own Shopify after redoing the entire website. I still have to add like all my teethers and stuff like that, that I want to sell like my bibs and like aprons and just a bunch of random stuff that I haven't been able to like put on there yet. I just haven't had time to, um, but, but it's easy. It's easy to add stuff once you've already got the hang of it. Um, they do have a lot of plugins like plug and plays which I do suggest, like I do a lot of gifts for like baby showers and stuff like that. So I have the option of gift wrap and like gift cards and stuff like that. So if you want to do that, you just go in the Shopify like homepage and you can do like different plug and plays, which are super helpful. Like also, um, if you have an Etsy shop, which I'm not sure if you do or not, but if you do, you can plug your, you can just buy the Etsy um, plug and play for Shopify and it'll automatically sync like all of your reviews on Etsy to your Shopify. Because once you start with a certain like e-commerce platform like Shopify, you don't have any reviews on there yet, but people like to see reviews. And if you don't have any, they don't know where to find you. They're not going to automatically assume that you have an Etsy shop. So you want to plug those in. So I have those on my Shopify and they just automatically, Etsy, the app that I have connected to it automatically updates every 24 hours. So people are getting live feeds of my reviews that they they leave me which is a super awesome feature is that a minky baby blanket yes sorry do you want me to move the angle of this i'm just sewing the um sides together or the like front and back pieces together Sometimes this needle gets stuck back here if I don't move it out far enough. But yes, I have six blankets. I'm on my fifth one. So we have one more after this. And then I will cut them and then we'll sew the top stitch. Cut them, flip them, and then top stitch. And then package which packaging I've gotten pretty fast at because blankets have been flying off the shelf. So I've been packaging so many blankets. Can't. I seem to keep this one in stock. It's crazy how popular this one is. This is my seashell and seahorse one. And this one, I, this particular one, I actually had picked out a while ago for my, my favorite cousin had a baby and he loves the ocean and so does his wife. And so I just picked this one because there's, she's super girly, his wife is and everything. So I picked this out to kind of match the theme of their room and it was a surprise. And they loved it. So I ended up keeping it in my shop because I loved it too. And now it's like my most popular girl print. So I love when things happen like that. And you can just remember it like every time you make one of them. I hope I'm not moving the camera every time I smack it with the blanket. So sometimes it does that, and then I just have to go underneath of it right here behind the needle and just pull that out a little bit. And then it goes. It's hard to do it with the camera right there. Because the blanket is heavy, so I'm trying to like maneuver it 
around. It's funny because I'm wearing an AirPod in one ear, but I have no idea if it's even working or if my phone's the one working. Is it freezing on anybody else or is it just her? Maybe refresh it. I feel like it's fine on my end. But who knows? I like to keep my arm and that's when you see me just keep doing this and that's just kind of making the fabric nice and flat so that it stitches really nicely. I have lives, many lives on my hands. I also have videos on this. Um, if there's any videos that you guys want refreshers on, um, because I do always change the way that I do things. Obviously, you guys probably have noticed me doing some things one way, and the next time you see me, I do it a different way. So there are multiple ways of doing things that I make. And if there is one specific thing that you want me to show you guys, please let me know. Got a needle. But the good thing is, is these needles are so tiny that it doesn't hurt my machine. Here, I'm going to cut this. I've actually never had that happen before. <laughs> but look what it did. It caught it. So, goodbye. It's the first time that's ever, ever, ever happened to me. FYI. Mm -hmm. Caught on camera. comments that I do sew over my needles and I've always said that but I've also always said that it'll happen eventually but it never has yet well tonight was a night it happened but I do always move these ones back I'm so glad I'm catching you live hi Linda thank you for being here you just caught me running over my needle for the first time ever. It's been a night of things happening. But we're 
we're working through it. So I've had a busy week and I just needed to get these orders done and I decided to do a light a late night live. So here I am. It is 11:20. Holy cow. So I've this is my sixth blanket that I've sewn in an hour. But I still need to flip them. So we've cut like half of them out because half of them were already cut. I embroidered one, we cut backings out, I pinned them all, and now I'm on my last one sewing together. And then I have to flip them and top stitch. So we will see how long. I'm gonna change this needle after I do this because I hit that, I hit that pin, so I don't wanna keep sewing on it, but I just figured I would finish this out. At least. But I wanna time it and see how long it takes me to sew, top stitch all the other blankets. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to now, turn you guys this way because I'm going to be over here. Just taking out all the pins and flipping, cutting and flipping. Okay. It's good. Just chugging along. Making progress? Kind of. I've sewn all these so I have to um, trim them, flip them, and then top stitch and package. Oh, just that. Just that. <laughs> that really go. Okay. Okay. I love you. Okay. Get a good sleep. Bye. Can you come to the kitchen? I'm gonna try. I love you. I have a lot to do. I know. Yeah. I know. I'm just gonna, I think, finish at least just top stitching all these. Yeah. And then maybe come to bed and finish packaging in the morning. Yeah. And then when you take, maybe when you take the boys or do something, we can drop these at the post office. Yeah. Something like that. For sure. All right, I love you. All right, love you. I like to use my scissors, if you're wondering, with this minky blanket. I use my rotary blade with the other ones, but I like to use it with this, just it gives me more control when this is all minky right here. This blanket's back-to-back -back minky. So it's kind of soft and I don't want to mess it up. I like to get as close to it as I can without cutting it. Because this one, I do not top stitch. I forgot to mention that. I put my tag in it, and then it's done.
I'll see what this one looks like. I wasn't gonna really, really like it, but I think it's cute. So I always leave that tail, when I cut it, I leave the tail like that on both sides. It's like that when I, when I cut it. So when I cut it, I angle it just like that. So I go in, across, and then at an angle. That way when I sew my tag in, it tucks in nicely like that, and then you'll never be able to tell. So there's the blanket. And you can see I did the knockdown stitch behind there in gray. So the name would pop out, but there's a little blanket. I just have to put the little tag on there with a little ring. I'll use a blue one because I like to match the name on there. And then that's it. So that one's done. I gotta put my tag on there and then it'll be finished. Let's do these ones. These ones I do top stitch.
black is so messy. I love, I don't know you guys, I'm so weird, but I love looking at like how it like brings the colors down, especially when I use like a blue, like watch, I won't empty it yet, I'll wait till I get that blue in there, oh, it's so pretty. Yes, they shed so much. They're beautiful, don't get me wrong. But yes, that's why I love my vacuum because it saves my shop from all that fur everywhere. Look how pretty. <laughs> I just love it. It's like a marble. So these ones are lovies. So the, like, let me show you right here. Hold on, let me finish flipping this out. So this blanket and this lovey go together. So a lot of people will buy a crib blanket and then a small lovey to match. That way you don't have to take your giant crib blanket with you everywhere you go. Um, babies tend to cling to whatever blanket they are given when they're like first born. And so if you have that same matching filling, so like they, if they, whether they like this side or this side, they know if you try to give them a different blanket, it's not gonna work. So that's where I decided to make matching miniature baby blankets called lovies um, for moms to take with them in their car seat or stroller or in their, when they're going out of town, they have them to sleep with in their playpen or daycare, anywhere like that where it just makes them feel like their security blanket so they match their crib blanket that way they don't want to carry that giant thing around with them everywhere they go so that's what these are 
and they can be whatever size you want them to be. I just made mine up. I like them to be a little bit more rectangular instead of square. So I just made mine two inches taller than it is wide. Yeah, so some people just buy the lovey, some people just buy the blanket, it just depends. Some people buy both. So you'll see like right here, I do, that's what I do first before I putting the blanket on. So I have their name on there on this one. And then I have the name on this one. I have the name on the, all three of those too. The only one that doesn't have a name is this lovey right here because they already put the name on this one right here. So this one goes to that one. I got to empty this. How many blankets have you gotten done during a live? Looks like you've been knocking them out. Yeah, so I've had, I've, this is my six of them all together. One, two, three, four, five, six of them, yeah. I know, I'm trying to get them knocked down. These are, the six that I had laid out are the ones that I needed to get out. So if I get these done tonight, I'll be happy. stocking and vacuuming because it's so messy, especially black, black super messy. I don't know why it's messier than the others.
vacuum it, well, A, because it keeps my shop less messy, but also I'm not going to give the customer a blanket with all kinds of fur all over it. But is that, um, is that super loud with the vacuum? I like to make this hole just in the big enough for my little fist to go in there. And then I go to the opposite corner and I pull it back. And then I pull it out. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Go to the opposite corner and then I pull it down and then you pull it out. And then it just comes right through. And then you just go in and fix your corners and then there's your blanket. And then this one has the name Walker on there. like a mini Dyson. It's so powerful. Best vacuum ever for this kind of project stuff. For sewing, embroidery, all of it. So this one and this one go together. I have two more blankets to cut and vacuum that are going to be loud. So I am sorry, you can mute me because it's too much. Is that maybe Blue Minky hand trucks? Does the customer choose the bathroom for the Minky blanket? Yes. Um, well, typically, unless they write a note on a specific color they want, they'll just get what's on the uh, listing. So um, that listing comes with black. Um, but in their description on my Etsy, it says if you would like a different specific color, just leave it in the notes at your checkout and I will do whatever color they want. I have all the colors, so it doesn't matter. Um, but when I make them as like samples or just first time putting them up on a listing, I do just whatever color I feel like it looks best with. So, but yeah, absolutely. They can choose whatever color they want. If they message me and tell me that they want a specific color, I'll do that for them. No biggie. Where did you get your vacuum? I think I need to get one because that minky can get pretty messy. Yeah, um, Linda, it's super, it's like a little tiny Dyson. It's so powerful. It's the one I did for my giveaway. Um, but I love this vacuum. You can get it on Amazon. I think I have it linked in my description box below if you want to check. And if I don't, then I can link it for you. Just let me know. I can do it really quick for you. I think they're like $50, something like that, but it's a powerful little thing. And you just charge it like a phone. It's awesome. It's gonna get loud again, sorry. <laughs> But yeah, it puts it right up. I used to use working with Minky, but with this vacuum now, you 
sure it's not so bad. Can you hear me when I'm talking with the vacuum on? That'll for sure tell me if my AirPods are not working or if they are working. That's why I do all of this at the same time because I don't, I just want to do it and get it over with instead of having to do one, sew it, stop, do another one. I just would rather do them all at the same time. Awesome. Make sure it's the right one. It's the Brigi. The other one that I had was like $25 or $30. This one's like $50. The first one that I had was my little black one. I love that one too, but this one is way better. Hopefully my links are working again. I never know if they're working or not. Okay, one more. And then we can see how long it takes me to top stitch. I'm gonna move this right here. Usually, this is what I do. This is how I usually do it. I'm short.
So you cut your Minky wider than the trim down, and then trim down. That makes it easier trying to make sure the edges line up while you're sewing. I'm going to start doing that. I love it. Yes, it's so much easier. You have to trim them before turning it right side out. Yes, so I leave them, I and mean, it's also just the way that the, the width of my fabric that I get um, just so happens to be an inch and a half bigger around the whole side. So that's just how I've always made them. I cut my blankets, my minky out to exact. Um, obviously you give yourself a little bit of seam allowance, so it ends up being about an inch shorter on all sides or like a half an inch on all sides so whenever i say my blankets are 27 by 35 i cut them at 36 by 20 i'm sorry i cut them at 27 by 36 and then in my description i tell my customer my blankets are 26 by 35 so they're an inch shorter um, than i actually cut them because you have to leave, I mean, this is really only technically a quarter of an inch because that's my seam allowance, but I don't, I mean, just in case. Like, I never have an issue with them because I've been doing them for so long now, but in the beginning, you never knew if it was going to slide around or anything like that. So until you get really familiar with sewing with Minky, it is an adjustment, um, but now it's, once you do it, it's super easy. Um, but yes, with the faux fur, I lay my blanket that I've cut on top of it. If you guys saw me do that in the beginning when I pinned them, and it's always like an inch and a half around on each side. And then I sew it, and then I cut it off and flip it. So I do the same thing every single time. And that's just how I do it. It works, it's so easy. I don't have to ever think about if I'm catching the underneath or anything like that. So it just works out. And it's, it just makes life easier to me. Because you have to trim some of it anyway, um, most of the time, so I just make it one step at the end. And I do that with my minky, my lovey blankets, and my any blanket that I make, I do that the same way with. Okay, so now we are ready to top stitch. Okay, let's see here. Um, I'm going to move this back this way. Do you guys like it at this angle or do you want me to move it a different way? Okay, so in my little table, I keep my little tags. So I'm just gonna get out one of these. So I use my little Bingham Bliss tag, you can see. And in this one, I don't top stitch because it's the faux fur. I just have my little opening right here for my tag. So I just make sure that the name is up on top and then I just stick my little tag in here. this little tail right here because I can't see on this faux fur where it's going. I like to use this little picker my seam ripper and I go in between here and that's how I know I like slide it up here and 
that's how I know that I've gotten to the very end of that. And then a way that I like to test it, just to make sure it's closed all the way, I'll cut off my little string right there. And I get these little strings right here that I'll cut off too. You don't have to, because you can't really see them, but that's just me. So my little tag is in there, and then you can't even tell really that it's like top stitch. So you can't see like the stitching on this fur, especially after they wash it, it's going to like blend in there and you can't see it. But I like my faux fur front and back blankets just to be like nice and cuddly and soft. So I never top stitch these ones. So there's that. And then we'll add a ring to it at the end. So there's that one. This one, I always start at the corner that I'm doing my tag. So I'll put this in right here. to use this to kind of guide it in the beginning to kind of pull it through. And then the way that I typically do it is I line the end of my presser foot up with the, not the fur, because the fur is always kind of every different way. Um, I like to line it up with the end of the fabric, the print. So I'm trying not to put my hand in the way so you can see. But I like to, and that'll give it like an eighth of an inch top stitch. And then I just turn it. I like to grab this and pull it through. And then I grab the corners. Straighten that out. how many stitches I go up and then down. I never change my thread color. It doesn't matter how dark my blanket is. I never change my thread color. That's just my choice, my personal preference. You can definitely change it if you want to. I just never do. Um, it just is like this kind of fur. It hides it so you don't see it in the back. So you'll never see it. So I just always use a white top stitch. So there's that one with my tag, and I always cut this piece off in the front. And then sometimes there's two, these two tiny little ones in the back that I like to cut out. Yes, this one's pretty, I love this color. 
the teal. It's like a marble. I always like to get a marble backing. I try to anyway, because a lot of my prints, if you notice, they're kind of watercolored. So like this one, not so much, but it still goes really well with the watercolor background. So the light and dark. that I usually sew, so it's kind of hard. Is your holder is separate piece sewn in the seam. No, I will show you that in a second. I'm almost done. Um, I see you are from the United States. You take orders from another country. Yes, I do. Thank you, Yvonne. Yes, I love this one. Um, let me know if you're getting off soon so I can show you how I do the attachment. But if you're hanging around, I'm going to finish sewing these other blankets while I'm right here, but it's just a ring that I attach. I always leave this little tag. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that. I leave this tag on the minky side and that is so that I can fold it in right here. And that's where I kind of fold in my fabric and that's where I put my tag. And it stays in there so that if you don't have enough in there to sew, then it will literally, you can go like this and it'll just come right off. That's why when you cut, so like if I went like this, it would just come apart if I didn't, if I only left like an eighth of an inch or whatever, like this piece has right here, the actual minky. So you have to leave a little bit more. Did 
Good night, CC. I'm about to get off soon after I finish these. I'm gonna pack them in the morning. I'm super tired too. And I have to do my live tomorrow with Blaine. So I will be live with Sewing Machines Plus in the morning, my time. It's 12 o'clock my time right now. So I don't know whatever time it is for you guys, but I will be live with Blaine at 10.30 my time in the morning. So hopefully you guys can make that. I know this is it's kind of late notice, um, but I'll be on with him talking about the SWF embroidery machine if you guys are interested in that. It's Hoop Fest. Hoop Fest week. But thank you so much for being here. In San Diego, so we're in the same same time. Nice. Do you still use your reliable sewing machine? I think it was the reliable you have. Yes, I do. I use it every day or every day that I'm doing clothing. It's in the lineup. So I do I serge and then I straight stitch and then I cover stitch. So um, this is my straight stitch for blanket machine, and then my reliable I use for my clothing. Still love that thing. Stay up so late every night and get up so early. I cannot do that anymore. Are you working or what are you doing up? Just watching? top stitch these either and when I first started my business I didn't top stitch them I just do now because I, I top stitch everything now I think once you like, like start sewing more top stitching is kind of a thing but you don't have to I am in Florida. My husband and I are working on a deadline order for tomorrow. Oh my goodness. I'm just watching, I fell asleep watching TV and now I'm wide awake. Oh, I hate that. Cause then you're like, well now I'm like wide awake and what do I do? <laughs> I'm gonna call it and I enjoyed watching and love your beautiful work. Good night. Oh, thank you so much, Angel. You're so sweet. Have a good night and thank you for being here. At least you have something good to watch, Linda. <laughs> You guys 
your sweet. So I just try to cut out all the little tiny strings. And there's that one. So this one is, where's the name? Right here, this one's Walker. So cute. I don't know if you can see that very well. But I love this, it's just so pretty. Two more. Whew, two more. Making progress. These ones are girl ones. So whenever I do boy ones, I use my gender neutral tag. And when I do a girl one, I use my girl tag. I flip it. It's see that it's pink oh thank you guys you're so sweet I promise I'll be doing more videos for you guys Fluffy, I like to take the edge of this and just kind of push in all the fur to make it stay down. Pull in my tag in and push it up. Set it down, make my presser foot even. If you guys didn't know what this black knob is over here, it's like a spring looking thing. If you push that in, it'll level out your presser foot. blanket after this now so it's doing fine it's yeah it's doing fine it's not skipping stitches or anything I love this fabric. <laughs> yeah, these are so soft. My daughter's jealous because she's like, you you said you were gonna make me a blanket so long ago. I will I think I'm gonna do it this year for their because I'll get them like a really pretty one. Now that I know they, they actually like them, I'll spend the money on the nice fabric and get it for them. They're at the age now where they know what they like and it's not just like, oh yeah, I'll like it, and then they don't. So I'm like, I'm not gonna spend that much money if you don't like it, because it's expensive. These blankets are very pricey, the material. But yeah, 
this little spring thing on your presser foot. I use it all the time. So like, if I lift this up, it'll release it. So watch, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see here. If I just put my presser foot down right now, see how it's like up? It's like angled up like that. If I press the spring in the back, it levels it out to where it goes flat. So right here, I'm gonna lift this up, press my spring, now it's flat. So it just gives you like an even feed. And then it's gonna mess up on me. If that ever happens, I just remove it I'll cut it under here. My my fur just got caught underneath. I'm not gonna ruin my blanket, so what I'm gonna do is just lift this up and kind of cut underneath here. So of course, things happen. I'm just gonna try to see it got caught in there. Yeah. Nothing happened to the blanket. You can't even tell that any that it even got caught. So I'm just gonna cut the string off from where I cut it. You can't even see like anything that happened. It just sometimes the hair is so long that it gets caught up in there. So I'll just start over, pull it through, put it back in there, and chuck along. That's why I use this thing right here. I kind of like poke it through and give it like a guidance to keep going. If you don't do that, sometimes that's when you get stuck. Because the hair, and that's why I also pull back here. I'm not pulling hard, I'm just kind of guiding it along. Because if you don't do that, then sometimes the long pile of fur underneath will get raveled up under your crust of under your, your feet, whatever they're called. Your dog feet. The technology, or terminology. Can't even talk. Also with that spring in the back, as soon as it evens out, you'll hear it click. That's what it just did. And then it'll go back to normal. That means it's even and you don't need it anymore. beautiful and very different. I took a reading tool and straightened it out to use it as my favorite tool. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. I've just always grabbed the, um, the seam ripper. That's what I've always used. Okay, one, one more. This would have gone quicker, but I've been talking been talking. Oops, I forgot to cut the corner off. That'd be the second one that we have to do. Last blanket. Yay, and then my blankets are done.
sometimes I just like to go like this beforehand if they're super fluffy. And then what I'll do is, I don't have any clips over here. Oh, they're right here. And I'll just kind of pin it so that it stays straight so I can get it under there without it moving around. I get my tag situated in here. custom order of a bunch of, I have to do hoodies, hats, t-shirts, men's and women's t-shirts. So I placed my order last night. It's for a hundred item order. Check your check your machine. Is there fur stuff under there? I said nope. There's nothing under there. I feel like I've been live longer than three hours. random fabric. Do you guys feel like that about your own fabric? Or so? Like I'm always wondering if people are going to like it or not because it's different. Like this one's supposed to be like ocean themed and it is but it's like very different ocean theme. It's very girly. What ocean has like these like balls? They almost look like Christmas tree bulbs. It's also beautiful at the same time.
awesome. Oh, you just, are you the one that told me that your husband does screen printing? No, you could help me if I needed anything. <laughs> All right, we're done here. Dunzo over here. with my screen printing yet. I want to, but I haven't. I'm going to learning. Always good for anything. Thank you so much, Yvonne. That's so sweet. so messy you guys don't look back there just package these really quick because that way we can just get them out in the morning. Packaging is super easy. So we'll just go over there and do that really quick. That's awesome. I mean, once you do it for one company and then they tell another company, because I do like soccer teams and it's literally word of mouth. Like one team will tell the other team like where they got it done and then they want you to do it. And it's just from one to the next. And so that's also another reason why I'm always so busy because you guys don't see the behind behind the YouTube or behind the social media scenes always. I never post that stuff. Um, but I do a lot of custom order stuff that keeps me super busy. And so I always have all these like big plans that I want to do for my business, but I don't have time to. I'm sure you understand, Yvonne, because yeah, it's just a lot. Shake off all the fuzzy fur. I like to lint roll this one though because it's black. And I don't want them to see. Oh, I got like fur in my face. I just like it to be nice and make sure it's nice and perfect. But yeah, the reason why I did the whole screen printing thing is because I just wanted it to be kind of an outlet, something fun. Can't decide if I want to do the screen print for adults or for children. I don't know. Just for fun for now. There wasn't that much. Like, this is how much I got off of it. Like, you can barely, like, see any. 
Yes, we have a full timer and we are still eight week turnaround. Holy moly, eight weeks. Yeah. Mine's three. Four. Mine's actually three weeks for orders and like four, four to six weeks for customs like that. So cute. Okay, we need to put the bat or the rings on these. Used to be two, yeah. I remember those days. Not too long ago either. It just got crazy. Which is a good thing. Not complaining. It's just hard sometimes <laughs> to do other things. Oh my gosh, this one turned out so cute. I love it. Okay. We're gonna go to the other side of the room so that I can, where's that come from? I got two different things going on. Let me go set these over there and then I'll bring you guys with me. Six blankets. Which means we need six, no. We only need three boxes and I love you going in the other. I think I can just unplug you guys. Let me see what my button. Yeah, I'm at 62%. Oh, I have a fuzzy in my mouth. Turn you around. Grab my drink because I'm thirsty. Sorry about that. Let's go this way. Don't look at my mess. <laughs> and where should I set you guys? Let's go over here. This way. I don't know, I'll fix that in a second. When I figure out my angle. Okay. Okay. People want to shop from home. Yes, they do. Okay, so let me see. Where do I want to put you guys? I don't know. Tell me if that angle is better or if you like maybe this angle better. Yeah, that looks better. <laughs> okay. So... I'm gonna go snap these really quick, actually. I gotta snap these. So let me turn you over here. Boop. I'm right there. I've been sipping on this wine all night long, and it's so good. Whoops. Put down my computer. <laughs> okay, 
I'm so happy that I did this tonight with Melia. I wasn't going to. I'm gonna let it go by and do it tomorrow. But you know, when you're just like, I gotta do it, just do it. And then you feel better that you did it. Even though I'm tired, I'm gonna have a long day tomorrow, but now I don't have to worry about these when they're done. So that's good. Can you guys hear me okay? Or is it far away? I said I've been watching you for this last three hours. That will teach me to watch for notifications. Hey, hey, Ellen. Yeah, just put your notifications on. Oh, you miss so much. Make sure your notifications are on your on your actual cell phone, not only on YouTube. Because sometimes I know I used to miss them too on people that I would watch, and it was a bummer because yeah. Actually, I'm just gonna use the gray for this one. Light gray. But yeah, we just made blankets, so you didn't miss much. I mean, you chatted along the way, and I ran over a needle. <laughs> My thread didn't wind correctly, so I had some things happen tonight, but we worked through it. It was fun. And now I'm just snapping and packaging. So you missed, you're not missing, you didn't miss much, is what I'm trying to say. And packaging is just the fun part, so you're good. Okay. So this one I don't top stitch. And let me, okay. You guys over there are usually on throughout my sleep hours. I will have to watch the replay. It sounds like you've had a fun day then. <laughs> yes, it's been an interesting day to say the least, but it's been very productive. Um, yeah. So now I just add my rings. I keep them all in this drawer right here and you just snap them on. So I don't know who was asking about that, I can't remember, but I just snap them on like this. And then you can attach anything you want to these. This is just my full front and back lovey, which I've been getting a lot of requests for lately. Um, but then these you just snap on and off when you want to wash it. So you just take it on and off like that. Um, and it just snaps right back on. And what's nice about these is you can attach a binky to it, you can attach a toy to it, you can attach anything you want to it. Or you don't have to attach anything at all. Like my niece loves it just like this, where she wants the tag on there, just like that and snapped, so she can put her little finger in here. She likes to put her thumb in there and just kind of do this thing. You know how kids are. They like to do certain weird things that make them feel comfy. So she loves that. So there's that. I don't know if you guys hopefully can see. 
my angle. Let me see if this one's better. Move this stuff. I have stuff everywhere. Maybe that's better. Sorry, I have so much stuff everywhere. I like to attach to these things. Each one of my blankets and muggies, I like to attach. These are just like care instructions, almost. Not almost, they are. So this one's going to go with this, so it's a matching lovey and blanket together so there's the little lovey and then there's the blanket with the name on there so it's just like a little excavator blanket so there's one let's see we're gonna i've already written out the thank you notes which makes it nice and easy so i'm gonna pull put their shipping labels in here to gift wrap it. This is how I do it. Put one of these little care instructions on here. Clip that in. Make it look nice and pretty. Flip that over. This one has a name, so what I like to do is actually flip the name over so they can see it.
My daughter puts my stickers on the back of my envelopes. So my Bingham Bliss sticker is already on there. And then I don't have to do it later. Which is always nice. Saves time. boxes I do a wax seal now and I have I don't know if you can tell on here but I have like my logo on a wax seal and it's so cute on the packaging so I'm not gonna do it tonight though because you have to wait for the heat up and all that I'm super tired so I'm just gonna stamp my stamp but it's just like little things like that that kind of set you apart, I think.
is perfect. Three hours, three and a half hours. I had to get through these orders, and the only way I'm getting through these orders is if I have to talk to you guys because it keeps me going. creative with this one. I don't think I've ever packed it like this before. There we go. Ready?
kind of how I do it. And then I put my this thing over it. Just like that. And it has my logo on there. I make my own like vellum paper. And this one is Savannah. was playing with that and we who knows what happened I'm just gonna add a few pounds or a few ounces to the blade Sorry, this is so boring, guys. I'm like super tired. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions for me while I'm just kind of not talking? It's like the quietest life. 
slide I've ever done. I do also like to use um
go to the top of the name. And then that is how I do my like gift boxing, I guess you would say. Super cute, super easy. Sometimes I'll put another sticker up on the top if I have one that I like. So maybe I'll do like, I don't know. I'm gonna do my Arizona one that I made. So I make my own stickers just for fun. It's one of my little hobby outlets that I love. This one is a Arizona one. I don't know if you can see that, but it says with love from Arizona. So I'll put that on each one of those. being here.